So I think I was given L'Chadchila more than two minutes. But I'm going to try as much as possible to be mitzamtim, m'shus t'choshev r'abonim. All the chaveirim, chaveiris, Someone, somebody once told me that the Heligi Rishna is Chusi Yelainu, that the Heligi Rishna was with the Chesidim and they were doing a Rikud. I don't know, it might have been some Chesitaira. I'm not sure when it was, but there was a Rikud, a dance. And the Heligi Rishna was dancing in a, an unusual way. He was dipping all the way down and then standing up and dipping far down to the ground and standing up. And afterwards, some of the older Hasidim asked the Rebbe, what type of a dance was that? Now we began with Yom Kippur and we're ending Ni'ilah. The Helge Rishna said, Ashrechim Yisrael. Lifne miyata mitar, mumi mitar esch. It's the last mission in you. Lifne miyata mitar, mumi mitar esch. It's the achone for shvuas as well. Lifne mi, mi is shvuas. Umi, the 50th mitar esch. Mikvi Yisrael Hashem. Vayme mikvi Yisrael Hashem. So the original said that I was thinking... When I looked at the chassidim, when I looked at all of you, the original said, I understood that Jews themselves are Hashem's mikveh. Mikveh Yisrael, Hashem. The Jewish people are the Rabbani Shlom's mikveh in this world. I have no words to thank you. My wife and I were talking, you have to have dollar. I came here, Avi asked me to come. He's helped some of our Hevron shul, helped. He saved lives in our shul. And I came, Al Sakar Satayv. I missed the Bar Mitzvah in shul, a Shever Brach is in shul, and Oifruf, and I'm going to have to do a lot of damage control. But I felt that I was doing a Pesatayv. The Weinberg is coming to help Avi with the, with the Shah. Ashrechim Yisrael, I feel that I spent Shabbos tiveling in a mikveh that Hashem has, the most beautiful mikveh I ever saw in my life. You. Mikveh Yisrael Hashem. <clears throat> tiveling in Jews who have every reason to hide in their homes and their basements, crying angry, blaming the system, the schools, the world, the president, whatever it is. And instead, the waters came together. Like when the waters will come, mine, your base Hashem will come by the Beth Hamikdash, the waters came from all over the world. Our broken world, our broken world. Mikvi Yisrael Hashem, but for my wife and I, this has been an absolutely astonishing experience. And I'm thinking the whole time, I wish this one was here. And I'm thinking about this mishpach of mine, I wish was here. And if only, if only this mishpach I had this 15 years ago, when something happened in our family by a relative, my mind is going through so many faces and names who need to be toiled in this mikveh that Avi and this family of Kesha Nafshi has created. <coughs> Once things began, I was expecting to spend the entire Shabbos crying. But then it turns out that there was a lot of funny stuff going on too. And I had an opportunity to, to laugh a lot. I enjoyed myself. 
And I see that the Eilam enjoys a little bit of Milsa Dibdi Chlusa. So let me share with you something that happened to my wife and I. Some of you might have heard this from me. Around 20 years ago, we were Zoycha to go to Yushalayim to visit our daughter in seminary. And one of the Balabatim had an apartment that he was kind enough to allow us to use for the Shabbos that we were there. And he told us that when we get to the apartment, we should go upstairs to such and such. There's a neighbor upstairs, and the neighbor will help us to take care of everything for Shabbos in the apartment to get ready. So my wife went upstairs to speak to this woman who turns out she was a Baalas Shuvah. A very sweet and special woman who shared the following story with my wife. She said that she was determined to learn Ivrit. She wanted to speak. At that time, there were still Jews in Yerushalayim that spoke Hebrew. So she wanted to learn to speak Ivrit. And she went to Ulpan and she was with dictionaries and she tried. Now, it turns out that she was having a problem in her apartment. Those of you who are from Erzisel know that they have certain bugs that are known fondly in Erzisel as jukim. Now, these are like super cockroaches, mutations from another planet. They're this big. They jump, they fly. They're harmless, but they're very, very intimidating. <laughs> it's become part of Israeli culture. Yesh Chajuk Barosh also. It's part of Israeli culture. Jukim. Now, so she had an infestation in her apartment of Jukim, of cockro Israeli cockroaches. So she wanted to call it an exterminator. And she looked up in the dictionary, somehow it came to the word charakim, bugs, insects. And that's the word she came up with. But she made a little bit of a mistake. She called an exterminator. And she said to the exterminator, Adoni, Yeshli ba'aya. I have a problem, I'll translate. I know there are guys here from Satmar, so I'll translate. Yeshli ba'aya. Gveret mahabaya, what's the problem? She says, Yeshli charedim al hamrepeset. She made a little bit of a mistake. Instead of charekim, instead of bugs, she said charedim, which means ultra Orthodox Jews. Yeshli charedim al hamrepeset. On my balcony, I have Jews. So the guy says, as gveret matrot samimani. Like, so. You know, I'm an exterminator, what do you want from me? So she says, Yeshlam Harbe Yiladim. Yiladim. They have many, many children, these Haredim. So this guy's not religious, but he says, Bor Hashem, Yeshlam Yiladim. And she thinks he's crazy. He says, Bor Hashem, Yeshlam Harbe Yiladim. She goes, Baruch Hashem? She goes, Asmach with Sami Mani. She says, Ani Sonetotam. I hate them. I hate the Haredim. So he says, I don't love them, but you have to learn to live with them. So she says, I thought you, I thought you were an exterminator. He says, I am. So what do you want from him? Matur tzami meni. Ani rosa shatavo v'tarogotam. I want you to come kill them. And he says, listen, lady, Ani Yehudi, Charedim, Yehudim, I don't know. It's all actually. She was laughing and realized there was a mistake. Baruch Hashem, Yehish Tano Charedim, Alam Repeset, Uba Midbach, Uba Chedesh Ena. Baruch Hashem, we have Jewish children. In my parents' generation, they didn't see for many years Jewish children. And now that Hashem has blessed us with them, we're not quite sure what to do. When things go well, ah. 
But when they don't, we're not quite sure what to do. And we feel lost. And there are families where words are spoken that are worse than anything that an exterminator could possibly come up with. And there are classrooms where words are spoken that are worse than any chemical dispensed by an exterminator. So I want to give a bracha. Now this bracha is going to take a couple of minutes. But it's all a bracha. I'm not here to explain anything. You heard from fantastic people. Talmini chachamim. Professionals. I'm not explaining anything. I'm just dreaming of something. And all I'm thinking about since this Shabbos began, and I'm davening, I'm davening, I'm davening. I'm looking over after Shabbos, I looked over the paper with the names. And I don't know these children. I know many children that are going through pain, including some of my own, which I shared with you before by Kabbalah Shabbos. So what I'm saying now is a guitarist tefillah. I'm davening out loud. Because I believe this is a way to have a gemach sima toiva for this Shabbos. Most of us now are trying to figure out how we're going to make good on the afikoymans. How this custom developed exactly, I'm not sure. I don't mean the Afikoyman that we have, but as far as the presence and the gifts and so on. I don't remember getting from my father except the Ashakoyer. To buy gifts for the children. Now there are two kinds of gifts. Listen carefully. I once heard in the name of a certain Talmud Chachem who said that he often traveled to Europe. He was away from home. And he found that in Vienna, where there's a beautiful, a beautiful Yiddish Kehila, he found that over there there are very, very beautiful stores for children's clothing. And he has some girls at home. And he realized that he would spend a great deal of time going from one store to the next, trying to find a nice dress for Nechama and a nice, a nice blouse for Rachela. And he would go from place to place. And it was hard for him to choose. And finally, he would pick something for this child another one for this little girl. And he was always thinking, maybe the next door there was something nicer. Or will my Rochele ever get the dress that was second place that I would have liked to have given her also? Because if I could, I would give her everything. I would clean out all the stores, but I can't afford it. So the question about the gifts that haven't been delivered, that haven't been given. So it's Moshe Shabbos and there's a Yid that we're waiting for. He makes cameo appearances in our lives, Elyon Novi. And we heard over Shabbos, the Navua, that every single one of you lives with on your lips. That the Indian of Elianovi is to bring back that which is lost. We even find in Halacha, when you open up Mesechta above a Metziah, Taisus brings at the beginning, the Indian of Yehemunach, there's such a thing of Yehemunach Hatshi of Elio, which is the Mishnah of Ahmed Zayin. But Yehemunach Hatshi of Elio says there are certain things that are waiting. There are certain things that are in limbo and they are waiting until Elanovi comes. Until somehow the truth will be revealed. 
Just like there are things in Torah that we don't understand, and Teiku Tishbi Yataritz, they were waiting for the Anavi. There's so many things in our lives that we don't understand. And when we open the door for the Anavi, we're waiting for him to bring back all that's lost and all that's missing. Because you and I know that the greatest present in the world that you and I are waiting for is the return of our children, each and every one of them. And you know that it, the greatest gift that you and I can give our children is our love. And everybody here, like myself, and I shared with some of the Chever by Nani Shabbos last night, you know that there are certain words that you wish you had said to the child 10 years ago. That now we're a little bit smarter and we're learning. There are certain feelings that perhaps I should have shared. Certain things I could have given to the child. And now my heart is broken. Why didn't I tell her that? Just like so many times I've sat there Elena by a shiva. And I'm sitting with a, a son or a daughter who had 40, 50, 60 years to tell a father or mother, I'm sorry, I love you, I never told you how much you mean to me. And now suddenly, the parent is no longer here. But it wasn't sudden. There are words that we don't give that we should. There are feelings that we don't show that we, that we should. There's love that's waiting and is held back for all different reasons. And then suddenly, suddenly, more sudden than the passing Lalena of a parent, suddenly the child is not coming home. And we're opening the door for Leonovi to bring back that child. Just like Rebbe Leibel Eges, who's going to say that the Indian of Light and Chanukim and they're outside the house, is a Yankim of Inu who's standing by the door waiting in the night. Where's Yosef at Tzadik? Where's my son? And lighting a candle by the door so that maybe Yosef at Tzadik will see that here you have a father and mother who love you. Come home to us. We're sorry, we're here. We love you, we want you to come home. No strings attached. Nishkan Aleph, Nishkan Aleph minus, base, base plus, means nothing. Just come home. So what happens to all the, the love that we didn't give? The words that we didn't say. Somebody to give words from the Heilige Ishbet to Rabbi Yankel Ishbet to the Beis Yankel. He says the Indian of Leil Shimurim. He heard. Mestam from his father, the Meishi Loyer. Where he heard it from, Lamala Bakaidish. That the Indian of Leil Shimurim. Is a night of guarding, a night of watching. Is that when you sit at the Seder, the Indian of Lel Pesach, and the Elianovi coming at Lel Pesach, is that through this time of the year, a Jew is able to ascend to a place in his Amuna and her Amuna, that every single mitzvah that you wanted to do, every word that you wanted to daven that you didn't daven, every show of love that you didn't give to Hashem, to your child, Everything that the children wanted to say to us, our children love us, but they're so disabled by the world that we're living in that they can't share those feelings. Just when you think they're angriest at you, they're chalishing for you. What happens to those words that were not said? So Leil Shimur means that the Rebbe Shalom in place, Elianavi in charge, Elianavi, Eliatishbi, Leil Shimur is the Indian that Elianavi is Yehemunach. He's watching these words. He's guarding these emotions. He's guarding these things. I think back now when I was raising the children. Why didn't I take that child someplace on her own, on his own more? Why was I so selfish? Why did I get so caught up with my inyonim, saving Kla Yisrael, when my own children wanted me? Because once I took the oldest one who was giving us a problem and 10 people told me, I think you should take your Rebbe someplace. So I took her out somewhere. And I'm still patting myself on the back for that one outing. Or to throw a ball or a little bit around with my son. And I remember thinking that I need to do more. 
but I'll do it later. I'll do it sometime. And I never did. The dress I didn't buy. The kiss that I didn't give. The words that I didn't share. As a marshal he gives of a father who entrusts, gives the child a package, a bag of gold coins. And the child is a child and he walks with this and he's looking at this coin and he drops this one, he's looking at this, he drops another one. By the time he's a little bit down the road, he's lost most of the coins. And what's he going to tell his father? So the Ishbitzer says that he's going and he, and he comes around someplace, he walks, finally goes home, and his father is standing there with all of the coins, and his father said, I was following you and I was picking up the coins as you dropped them, waiting to return them to you because they're yours. Have a, I give you a bracha. Don't forget for a moment every good feeling, every tefillah, anything that you feel that I, why didn't I, I should have, I could have, what happened to me? If I would have, it would be like this, which we're talking about, al-Shabbos, not to make yourselves crazy with these machshavas. These machshavas come from the Sitrach, but they come. Every single thing that was not given is going to be given. Everything is being held by Leonovi. Nothing has been lost. Not one feeling, not one thought has been lost. The children that during this time, they're on a leave of absence from Yiddishkeit, and they're chalishing to do mitzvahs. They're chalishing to learn. What's going to happen with all the mitzvahs that were missed? What's going to happen with all the blat gemar? What's going to happen with all the shachas and the minchas? What's going to happen to them? The Bayerim is guarding them. And everything is being kept. Eleanor is going behind every child and picking up everything that the child drops along the way. Nothing is lost. So al mishkovi lois. We just lay in Pesach. Al mishkovi lois. Bikash diye shahava nafshi. Some of you know what this is. No, all of you know what this means. Of course, it means many, many things. But we're in a mikveh now. This kredus kedoshim right here. Al mishkovi balaylos bikash diye shahava nafshi means that most of you have lost many nights of sleep. For what reason? Because because the Aisha have an Avshi. I'm waiting for my beloved to return home. Because the Aisha have an Avshi. Because the Vilay Mitzalasiv. He's lost. He's lost. I don't know where he is right now. I don't know where she is right now. Who could measure that? Something that wasn't, maybe I didn't hear it spoken about. With everything that we're doing with the children and the Avi's Mahalach, but Safkal Sof, the child is away tonight. Where is the child? What's he doing? Is she safe? I'm not talking about the Yiddishkeit. I'm not talking about whether he took his film with him. Is he safe? Is he alive? I had a parent last week was telling me. I don't know if he's going to be alive. I'm waiting to hear a phone call from a policeman. I'm waiting to get a knock on the door. All those nights that you've stayed up waiting for the, the one you love, waiting for him or her to come home. I don't know where. A sight of a bashvokim, it says in the Pasik. I dray around looking in the streets, over a chivas in the marketplace, the shvokim, I'm looking. Has anybody seen my child? And who is your child? The apostle goes on. My child is the most beautiful one in the world. My beloved. 
So Chazal have many pshatim of what it means to have eyes like a yaina, like a dove. In one of these Chazals, a nayach yainim means that when the bird, the little bird is taken away, the mother doesn't leave the shayvach, doesn't leave the cove, that place, that little place that, that, that they live in, a type of a nest and whatever. The mother doesn't leave. The scientists have explanations that the mother smells the scent of the little one and is staying there until the child, until the little bird comes back. And Chazal say that the Jewish people remain in Yerushalayim. We refuse to leave Yerushalayim because we're waiting for that Aveda to be returned to us, the Shechina. We're waiting for Hamach, the Shechina, the Litziyon. Einayach Yoinim. Mothers, you hear me across the Mechitza? You hear me? The mothers that are waiting for theirs to return the mothers who know that this child is the one with the most beautiful eyes. And that those children alone need to come back. And right now they don't know how. But if they find their way, and they will find their way back, that when they find their way back is because of the mothers who refuse to leave the nest. It's because of the parents, Al-Mishkov and Balaylois, because the Shahava Nafshi. It's because of our dear friend and savior, Avi who never ever gave up for a moment, who stands by Yerushalayim, who goes around through the shvokim and the rechavis of our lives, looking for our kids and thinking of ways to bring them back to us. But all of these are there and being kept. All of our feelings, all of the words, and we're going to have the opportunity, all of us, to give back to the children what they needed and for them to give us and for us to hear from them the words that we so desperately wanted to hear as well. So I want to, I want to end and share with you a personal story I told many years ago in shul. It's a whole interesting thing that happened from that that I found a family member because of the story, the story that I told. My parents are Hungarian survivors. My mother comes from a place called Munkac, you probably heard of. My father comes from a place called Ungvar. But Hashem, they're alive and well. And I have this chus to visit them almost every day and spend time with them. It should be Mishnah for many more years. My father, Zolgazun Zayn, told me that after the Melchama, many of the Hungarian Jews, a large percentage of the survivors came to Budapest. Because there, there was an office of Hayes. And in the office, they had lists of names. People would come and sign up to say, I'm still alive. And they would write the name from this and this city. And every day, Jews would look to find somebody, a friend, a relative. So my father once told us this by the Seder. He said there was a big street over there in Budapest. And all they did all day long, thousands of Jews would walk up and down this long, wide boulevard looking in every face to see up as somebody, to find someone that they knew. My father already knew, he already had heard what happened to his parents, I mean, they were on the transport to Auschwitz, and every, he knew already what happened to most of the mishpache. But there was one brother that he was hoping was still alive, and he went every day to the office in highest to check to look for the name Yitzchok Weinberger, who in the family of my father they call Itz. And it wasn't there, and my father just said all day long, morning till night. Every now and then I'd meet somebody that I would know, we would hug, we'd cry, weiter, looking for Itz. So he says, one day he's in the highest office, and he's going over the papers, 
Why am I going? Why am I going? Why am I going? Because someone's gone. It's nothing. And then somebody goes, walks in over there, somebody from Ungvar, from my father's town. Oh, you're alive, you're alive. They're hugging each other. Now, this person was my uncle's close friend. So my father said, is Itsu, is Itsu alive? Do you know where Itsu is? So he says to my father, Machu, my father's Marcha, Machu, he says, I'm sorry to tell you, I was together with Itsu. They were in a forced labor, and we were together, and something happened, and there was a tumult, and they took Itsu away with a few other people on the side, and they were shot. My father said that when he heard that, he didn't want to live anymore. He didn't know what to do. That was the last hope that he had in the world. Maybe Itsu is still alive. So he said he left the office and he continued his march. But he did it now only for an hour or two of the day. He had nothing else to do. And he would walk up and down the boulevard. Now he told this, this to us by the Seder. My father said that one day he's walking there. He's not really looking so much anymore to see. But in the corner, from the corner of his eye, he sees a familiar limp, because my uncle had a limp. My father sees from the corner of his eye, and he looks, and at the same time, my uncle, from a distance, saw my father. And my father screamed, Itsu, and he screamed, Macho. And they ran, and everybody was so, the other people, and they ran, they were hugging each other. And my uncle's sitting by the Seder with us, and the two of them are crying, and they very rarely would cry. My uncle's no longer in the world. They would never, they really didn't cry. They're not from these emotional types, which is a little bit different than many Hungarians. And they didn't let go of each other all of those years. And I heard that story as a child. When I told it in shul, there was a, an old relative of my father that turned out to have a son, a stepson in the neighborhood that was diving in the shul, and she said, this much you went was my mishpacha, and it turns out we had a reunion with that family that I didn't even know. But when I thought about that story afterwards, I imagine, what's it going to be like when Mashiach comes? Everybody has their own picture. What's it going to be like? My picture was painted by my father and my uncle. Yibodel Mechaim Lechaim. That's the picture that was painted. And I imagine all of us being on some wide street someplace and we're walking because the world is crazy. And we're going around and we're looking. And then there'll be that child from the corner of the eye and it's going to be tomorrow, it's going to be very soon. The child that's limping a little bit from his struggle in this world. And then it's going to be a Shrai, Sora, Rivka, Moshe, Avramel. On that day of the Heshiv, Levavos, Abonav, Levonav, Levavosam. When all that was lost is going to be returned. When all the love that we wanted to give and we want to give will be able to be received. And we'll be able to receive it back from our children. But now I know there's something else that's going to happen. There's going to be a Shadrach walking behind each of them. And the Avi's going to be there holding the hands of our children and saying, Get back, kick, look over there, there's your mother. Over there, there's your father. They miss you. Go back. The time has come to be united. Chever, the time has come for all of us to be reunited with our children to be reunited with the Bari Kalalamim, to be united with each other, to be united with the Malkin Bashikha, with the Gulash of Amitis, with Mahabi Amen, Amen, Amen.